Hey, this is Freddy from Turn Vertical, and in this kind of case study, I'm going to show you the art of creating $100,000 creatives. I'm going to show you exactly how we predictably and with a system come up with creatives that are able to last for months or years while bringing in consistent CPAs that scale accounts. So these are just some of the creatives that we've made. You know, this one spent 300K and this one spent 100K, 100K, 100K. So, you know, I'm going to show you the exact system that we use to create these kind of ads. I'm going to go over the research part, you know, which is, you know, I'm just going to skim through, uh, through quickly. I'm going to give you our exact SOPs and, and documents that we use, by the way. So reviews, uh, research, then for P analysis, I'm sure you haven't heard of that one before. Quadrant analysis, um, also probably new for you. Then I'm going to show you exactly how we um, create personas and angles and then how we go into concepting. I'm going to reveal our exact concepting kind of template that we use to create our tickets um, internally. Then I'm going to go over scripting, you know, what, what is important for the script. I'm going to go over the hook and then building blocks, which are, you know, essentially all you need to do, all you need to know to create great ads. And then I'm going to go over production, testing, iterating, and then tracking. I'm going to reveal our exact tracking tool that we use, our learning sheet that we use to kind of track all of the learnings. Um, so yeah, I would say let's get right into it. So first of all, research. And, you know, to come up with those um, ads that are able to you know, last for a month um, or years, and with consistent CPAs, we first need to go into the research part. I know it's quite boring and probably um, you hear you hear it with every video that you see regarding creating great ads, but it's really true. Um, you know, we have four main research parts, the basic research, review analysis, competitor analysis, and data mining research. Um, I've linked each and every one of them um, here, so you can just skim through these. Um, you know, some of them are rather short, while some of them, you know, have some more points. Um, I'm not gonna go through each one of these because, you know, I'm sure you know what to do. Um, you know, research is boring, but it has to be done, but it helps us in the end to craft personas and then angles. Um, so yeah, I'm going to skip through this really fast, but again, you know, we start with the brand guidelines, um, you know, go into basic research, competitor analysis, data mining research, when essentially if you onboard a client, you know, you probably don't need to do that because if you're a brand owner yourself, you don't need that. But we have a final questionnaire and then we go deep into the ad account and we conduct the P analysis and the quadrant analysis, which I'm going to go over separately because they are a little bit more different than from what you feared probably before. So for P analysis, what is the for P analysis? The for P analysis is kind of an ad account analysis, analysis that helps us to identify which funnel stages ads are at. Um, you know, if you don't know anything about awareness stages, um, there are five awareness stages. So problem unaware, um, problem aware, solution aware, product aware, and most aware. And you can kind of think of this, that this one is top of the funnel. These two are like middle of funnel and this is more so bottom of funnel. So if you're old school and we haven't heard of this before, then this is probably what's going to help you. Here I have a few examples of like headlines which you could use for the different awareness stages so just so that you understand how different they really are. So we have the product um, problem unaware, you know, transform your daily freshness. Um, obviously this is an example for deal rent. And I just took these, um, you know, headlines super quickly from ChatGPT. So obviously um, and you're gonna notice that the problem we are tired of short lasting deal rents, you know. And then solution we discover long lasting odor protection and then, you know, kind of in the product aware and most aware stages you start to mention the brand name. Um, so yeah, this is um, super important to understand because if you are missing any of these awareness stages within your ad account, you can't really scale because you need problem unaware ads and you need also most aware ads, right? And then, you know, how we do this analysis, I've recorded a quick tutorial for this, so you can check it out for yourself. But essentially, you go into the ads manager, you go to the top spending ad sets and you break, you know, you look at the last seven days only and then you break it down by day and you look at the frequency CPM, amount spent, and CPA. Again, everything is kind of explained in here. And um, look at the frequencies, right? And then essentially you can have four kind of outcomes. You know, you can have a below average CPM plus low frequency, you know, of a frequency of 1.00 to 1.15 daily. So this means that the ad is most likely at a prospecting level. You can expect the CPA to be at or slightly above your average CPA because the ad set is reaching a lot of new people. So this, you know, the purpose of, the, of an ad that is you know, reaching a lot of new people, so where the daily frequency is quite low and the CPM is quite low, is not to instantly convert those people. Yes, that would be great, but it is more so to bring people into the funnel and then you know, your other ads are going to convert them. So these ads tend to have an above average CPA, um, but this doesn't mean that they usually turn them off. They usually also get a lot of spend. And um, yeah, these are in the awareness stages of problem unaware and problem aware. And then, you know, medium high frequency plus medium high CPM. So it's both are above average or both have a, like 1.16, 1.7, 1.18 daily frequency. Um, as though those are kind of the middle of funnel ads, you know, if you, again, if you're old school. And this means that the ads most likely won't get a lot of spent, but the CPA should be below average, you know, in the awareness stage is solution where, and then we have our high frequency plus high CPM plus um, 
low spending ads, which are more so for bottom of funnel, right? And um, this means, means the ad most likely won't get much spent, but if, if it gets spent, the CPA should be below um, the average CPA. And um, awareness stage is product aware or most aware. And this way we can identify which of um, what awareness stages um, are missing in the ads head or in the ad account, and we can put our focus there. So if we, you know, for example, have a lot of ads, which um, are kind of in the middle of funnel stage, we know that we need, you know, top of the funnel ads, you know, problem unaware, problem aware ads to really scale up the account, right? Then our kind of last analysis, um, I'm gonna go over this quickly as well as the quadrant analysis. We have three different quadrants, um, which are kind of, you know, benefit analysis, awareness stage analysis, and then creative format analysis. So we have static, video, product benefit, emotional benefit, problem unaware, most aware, polished or lo-fi. And this way we kind of, um, you know, put our ads in each of these quadrants. We do this again three times, and then, you know, we can find out if our media mix is going well, if we touch enough on emotional or product benefits, and it also again helps us further to identify which awareness stages um, are missing. Uh, I recorded a loom here as well, so you can check that out for yourself. Um, again, don't want to bore you with that. And I think now we can kind of, or we kind of start to get into the interesting part, which is, you know, really personas and angles. And, you know, this is crucial for your ads success because you need to identify the angles and pain points we need um, that we need to hit in our ads, right? If we don't know which pain points and angles we need to hit, then we um, just throw essentially shots in the dark. So it's super important for us to get a gist of what we need to do. So, you know, let's get started. So this is the exact template that we kind of use. So we do all of the research at first, and then this is kind of where it all comes together. You know, we usually um, create two to four personas, and then we have lots of angles which we can, you know, need for um, for our rights. So this is usually enough. So two to four personas based on all of the research, and, and in a short description, what kind of angles can we hit them with, and then, you know, which products um, of the client we can use. Then pain points, core beliefs, dreams, desires. I mean, the standard kind of persona building thing. Um, common objections. I think this is quite important because, especially if you look through um, some of the Facebook ad comments, you're going to find a lot of objections that, that people have. Um, you know, whether it's the price, shipping, where are you producing your product, um, what's the guarantee, whatever. You know, to really, um, and some of these personas have different objections. So it's important to kind of note them down as well. Then key use piece. And then life force eight and nine learned desires. If you don't know what the life force eight and the nine learned desires are, I have linked you my personal summary of um, cash advertising, which is a great book about advertising. I've you know written all of this um, by myself. You can go through this. It's a forty-page document, um, and you can just search for life force eight, and you can you know you have the life force eight here, and then also the I think nine learned. Um, secondary human ones, right? And you can see which one of these um, are right for your product, right? So we kind of combine the learnings from breakthrough advertising, which obviously has the awareness stages, um, then also from cash advertising to really create um, a great kind of persona, right? Um, and once we're done with creating the personas, we can now start to get into concepting. So for concepting, we you know take one key persona that we want to um, hit with our ad, um, you know, and we kind of fill out this form. So you know, research first. Identify missing awareness stages, identify missing ad types, you know, through the credit analysis and for P analysis. And then we know exactly what our ad account is missing. And then we can start to concept. Because for example, if we know we need um, a um, um, product aware image for this and this persona, we can easily create the concept, right? That's not the problem. But to get to this point, we need to obviously do the research first and we need to do it um, extensively. Um, and yeah, this is then our exact concepting template that we you know, give our credit strategist and that which they create the concept on that um, then gets forwarded to the copywriting team. So, you know, to fill this out, to fill this out, we need the persona, then basically the concept, we usually have an example ad and um, which you base the concept upon, you know, any references here, then, you know, which awareness stage do we need to hit? What kind of ad type is it? You know, in video or image really, then which pain point and desires of that specific persona do we want to hit? Then, you know, key use piece, um, if there's anything additional which we need to uh, know, you know, for going into scripting, and then the hypothesis, you know, why this ad is going to perform well, or which maybe even um, specific building block. I'm going to go over building blocks in just a second, but maybe which specific building block is going to perform really well, and then ex any extra infos, um, obviously necessary to give it to the to the team. And then we kind of get to the to the important part, to the interesting part, which I think uh, many of you are here for. So, which is the scripting. So, obviously, a script um, needs to start with the hook first. Um, you know, a hook has the biggest impact on the performance or has big impact on performance. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, everybody knows about hook rate or hold rate, but you really have to be careful with creating a good hook. You know, you just can't be clickbaity 
you need to be mindful yet interesting, right? I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. Um, so just hooking in for the sake of hooking people in isn't good. You know, every great hook follows this pattern. It has a pattern interrupt, you know, it's something unique yet relevant. So this could be, you know, a comparison um, or a split screen ad. So split screen ads have worked really, really well for us. There's also these kind of hacks, you know, a reverse hook or like some, some weird B-roll footage or whatever, which, you know, maybe like pimple squeezing or whatever. I'm not a really big fan of that because yes, you're going to get a great hook rate, but usually the hold rate and the CTR and the CPA of these ads is fairly high compared to the average. So you have to be, you know, you have to be mindful and interesting. So again, just hook people in for the sake of hooking people in. You know, again, what we like is like a comparison, uh, more split screen ad, um, or just some other pattern interrupt which is specific to that product, right? Um, then you have to call out your audience. So an ad always performs better if you call out the exact audience um, um, the ad is for. You know, call out your persona and the hook. If you're a wine lover, watch this. If you can't get up in the morning, watch this. You know, get creative, really call out your persona. And cut out the people you want the ad to watch because then your algorithm only uh, also is going to adapt um, over time to that specific persona. So if you call it out, you know obviously people who are that persona are going to react to that ad if it is if it is a good ad. And then over time, more people specific to that persona are going to react to that ad. And so rather than having a completely broad approach, which you know always performs well, so you're going to call it your persona, and um, your ad is going to you know, go after that persona specifically rather than going completely broad. Um, and then, you know, what I like to have is an, also an open loop. So uh, an open loop, so something that gets people watching, right? And um, think those satisfying um, pimple popping videos you, you get on your For You page sometimes, right? You can't really stop until until you see that the pimple is popped, right? And this um, 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 kind of pattern um, we try to incorporate in our ads as well. You know, if you can't get up in the morning, and watch this, the mind needs to be shut quiet, you know? If, you, if I can't get up in the morning, I might just want to watch this because of this text, you know. You know, uh, at least I want to know the answer so that I can say it's good or bad and then I can keep scrolling, but I need to know the answer first, right? So hook um, consists of these three things essentially, right? We have the shot, um, have the building block, the script, gonna go over that in just a second, but the anatomy of a great hook, pattern interrupt times audience callout times open loop, uh, times open loop equals a great hook, which gets me to, to the next point, which is kind of the building blocks. So let me explain building blocks. So each, we can kind of, each sequence, you know, every ad you make should be divided into different scenes or sequences. Think big movies, they shoot, uh, they shoot one scene after another, right? The advantage is you can easily exchange every scene and can iterate better because if you know that, you know, hook should be scene one, then you have scene two, which is maybe, you know, a, pro a product intro or whatever. And, and if your ad is failing, because let's say you have a great hook rate, but a super poor average watch time, you can simply change that scene or that building block with something else, you can swap it out and then you can iterate way, way, way faster, way, way, way better if you have this specific um, overview, you know? Um, advantage, you can easily exchange in every scene, um, every scene and can iterate better. We call this building blocks. So each building block consists of the following. So shot, what kind of shot um, is it? Is it a production shot or a talking head shot or an action shot, right? Um, here, we have a basic overview. So I'm um, gonna go with that in just a second, but just so you know. So, you know, shot, what kind of shot is it? So. Um, production shot, talking headshot, or action shot. You know, unboxing, buying experience, texture shots. What kind of what kind of shot do we want to see from the creator, um, or what B wall do we want to get? And um, then we have a, um, a product building block. You know, do we want to intro the product? Do we want to demo the product? Do we want to kind of go with benefits or whatever? And then we have the person. You know, is the person maybe showing a problem, or maybe showing a failed solution? Maybe they have a different product and a competitor product holding in their hand or whatever. Um, and then we have the script, which is obviously what's supposed to be said in the script, and uh, kind of. Um, is based upon the building block that we want to have, right? So we have the shot, the specific building block, and then the script, which is specific to that building block. So obviously not every building block needs to have a script. Um, some could be just um, a demo shot, but this way, you know, we um, maybe have a production shot, so maybe an unboxing shot, which also kind of demos the product. Or we have a talking head a green screen, which goes over a fake solution, right? And maybe you go over a different competitive website, but this way you can take, uh, you take one of the overarching building blocks, you know, first of all, production, then production shot, you know, close up, and then you go into kind of which um, query thread shot you kind of want to combine that with, right? So here I've made production, text a shot, and then you combine that. <coughs> you combine that with a person who, um, you know, shows the desired results at the close up, right? And this is how you then create great ads. So if you have building blocks, which are kind of templatized, again, you need to study to be creative, and I want you to be creative, but if you can kind of templatize it, 
and you can then easily come up with new ideas. You can come up with themes. You can exchange different building blocks. So for example, if you maybe have a great hook rate, then you have a, after that you have a production unboxing shot, which is kind of in the close up. Maybe you want to change the production shot uh, unboxing with um, um, a, a buying experience or something, right? And this way you can easily um, iterate, in which I'm gonna go over in just a second as well. But this is how easily it is to really create ads. Because if you have, if you have everything combined in a scene, and you have building blocks for that specific scenes, you can simply also maybe change the script from, from this building block to, to this building block. Maybe you can just change these two, um, these script elements, right? Um, or you can just exchange the shots or you can just exchange the building blocks. So it's super easy to um, create you know great ads with this. Because if you follow that hook formula, you know, pattern interrupt times audience color times open loop, you're always gonna get a great hook, right? And then you simply need to be interesting enough to get people, you know, to keep people hooked in. And you do this by having a great shot, a great building block. Again, building blocks um, is you know that type of stuff here. Show problem in, in, a, in a selfie style or failed solution in a demonstration how-to or whatever, right? Desired results in a demonstration how-to action shot. Um, and then you base your script up on that. So it's super easy to create great ads. Um, yeah, then we kind of have the production, which um, you know creator makes or breaks your ad. You know, you need to have proven creators, ideally speaking, need to have a creator database and know which creator works well for you and for which audience, you know, um, a specific creator works well. You know, keep edits simple, you know, have good lightning. And again, editing should be congruent with platform and should be congruent with the audience. So super, super straightforward. I'm sure you, you've seen countless of examples of other kind of UGC ads or video ads or um, whatever. And I'm sure you know that you just should keep it very minimalistic, very simple. And then testing. So, um, you know, this is, I think, another interesting part because this is where most brands burn, um, you know, unnecessary money when it comes to testing. Um, and there's an easy way to combat this because the testing strategy we use, we don't waste any money on testing if the ad isn't good. And it's not by using cost caps or anything. It's by simply having a CBO testing campaign or CBO even scaling up campaign. So what we have is we have one campaign, one ad set has the winning post ID ads only. So only winning ads, right? We take the post ID and put them into that specific ad set. Then new tests we want to make, we simply create one new ad set with dynamic creative turned on. And, and if you know Facebook thinks it's better then the post ID, it gets spent. And if not, it gets now spent. And this way you burn no money testing because if a test is good enough, it's going to get spent. If it's not good enough, um, it's not getting spent. And there's always this argument, but the ads in the post ID are already proven. They have more social proof. You know, your your, your new tests are never going, going to get any spent. And this is completely false. You know, if you have a great ad that deserves spent, the algorithm will detect that and it will get spent. So I have an example right here. So this is you know, day one, day two, day three. So we have our, you know, this one is also pinned. So this is kind of our post ID. As you can see, it got, you know, 1300 in ad spend and then the other one got, um, you know, 600 years in ad spend. This is a dynamic creative, it was a test. Then we launched our new creative test, which, you know, got zero, uh, yeah, zero euros in ad spend. So nothing, because we just launched it on that day. And then the next day already, it was picking up 642 years of the spend and it was kind of stealing it from this post ID right here, right? And we were even able to scale up the spend. Um, but it's essentially stealing it from the post ID. And then if we skip to the next day, you can see it got all of the spend and it's, you know, it stole it from the from the other test and from the post ID. So this means that this ad, and it also was performing better, um, was performing better than the other ads. And Facebook was giving a spend, even though this post ID has easily over 100K in data. It's, it has ads that have like 10K likes, a thousand comments or whatever in there. And yet, and still, the Facebook algorithm was smart enough to, to kind of divide the spend onto that ad set because, um, or, you know, in that ad set, there were one dynamic creative ad, three different creatives, two headlines, two ad copies. Um, and the Facebook algorithm can detect if an ad is better than your current existing ones. So, you know, this this nonsense of people saying, you know, if uh, it won't get any spend because the ones have social proof is, um, you know, again, couldn't be further from the truth. So I highly urge you to test with a CBO um, and you know, see where the spend is going, and if something's not getting any spend. Another argument I always hear is that you don't have any data on how to iterate this, and um, you know, assume that everything is bad about this ad if it's not getting any spend. Assume, you know, how can I completely change this ad up so it gets spent? Maybe completely change the maybe completely change the middle part. And usually, you know, that an ad gets zero spend is you know, 
not really true. In most instances, they usually get a you know, 50 to 100 euros in ad spend before they don't get any ad spend. So base your learnings on that 100 euros. And um, yeah, then we come to iterating. Iterating is key if you want to scale. You know, metrics you pay attention to, hook rate, hold rate, average watch time, CTR, conversion rate, and then obviously the most important one, I don't know why it's not in here, is the CPA. This is by far the most important metric. You know, you can have, you can have an ad which has a low hook rate but a great CPA, um, and you can also have a great an ad which has a great hook rate and a great CPA. So you know, keep CPA in mind first, and then you know all of these other metrics are quite relevant as well. And um, also AOV. You know, some ads tend to have um, a higher AOV for some reason. You know, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure why that is, but some ads go into the same landing page and um, say advertising the same product. They'd have different AOVs. So keep that in mind as well when doing your when conducting your analysis. Um, find the one winning ad where all the benchmarks are above average. So find the one ad which ideally has the most spent, you know, shouldn't have like a thousand years of ad spend only, but like really look at 10K or 100K or, you know, maybe even a million if you have an ad that has a million in ad spend. But keep a look at those ads and then, ideally speaking, somewhere between 10K and 100K, you should have an ad which has all of these metrics above average. And now this is no kind of the ad which you always reference back to. So which um, you, you, you base your learnings upon, you know, you maybe iterate upon essentially. Um, and, you know, ads we want to iterate. There are mainly four parts, you know, already winning ads. So how can we make this winning ad already better? How can we maybe make it appear to a different um, um, audience? Then an ad with a good hook rate, but low average watch time. An ad with a low hook rate, but a good average watch time. And obviously, you know, always um, CPA. Keep CPA in mind. So if this ad, for example, a good hook rate, low average watch time, it has a super, super high CPA, it might not make sense to iterate it. So there needs to be some some sort of average, below average CPA. It can't be completely bad, right? And then or just, just generally speaking, underperforming ad with a great conversion rate. So those are the four main types of ads that we like to iterate. And when it comes to iterating, there are countless ways you can iterate. You know, change the hook text, change the hook visual, change the voiceover, change the music, change the creator. For example, let's say we have a winning ad which features a man. We want to take that winning ad and create the same script, same B words, same everything with a different, you know, maybe a woman. And maybe that appears then to women. And then we have a second winning ad, right? Um, shorten the video and a change order of building blocks. You know, we talked about building blocks just a second ago. Add a call to action card at the end, create a reaction video to it, add a TikTok question box, use TikTok text to voice, change the music, and we had that already, and create a match up, whatever. But this is how you really go into iterating. You know, you have countless of, of, uh, of things that you can iterate, and again, you just need to be certain um, with the data. And for this, we have a, a tracking sheet, which, you know, essentially my, my advice would be to track everything, and our learning sheet is super straightforward. So let's just go through this really quickly. So we have um just copy this um put it here put it here so first of all we have the date you know when did we put this in here we have the strength so you know it could be a gospel a tested truth suspected truth wishful truth or discredited so for example if we hear somebody you know maybe you talk to a different brand owner and he has the um this format works super well so maybe it's a gospel right then we have obviously tested truth so if you have something you've tested over and over again this will be tested truth so for example if you have one great hook and you copy that hook and copy that hook and it also converts, gets people to convert, um, then that would be tested truth. Um, suspected truth, if we maybe have a new ad and it performs great, but we have um, just tested this kind of concept or hook or building block one time, um, then this would be suspected truth. So to really find out if um, that you know was the winning element or maybe some randomness, we need to test it again and again. And maybe two to three times, we kind of duplicate winners, like winning hook rate, and winning building blocks, winning ads in general, could duplicate the two, two to three times before you know that you have a, a real truth. So this would be suspected truth. And then wishful truth. Um, if we have our like weekly team meetings, we talk about stuff which we think could be winner. So this will be then wishful truth. And then something which you know gets discredited um, over time. So gospel that maybe gets discredited or suspected truth that it gets discredited or whatever, right? Then we have what? So for example, it could, could be a concept, could be a specific script it's like some specific sentence that you think gets people hooked in, right? It doesn't always need to be the hook. You know, you can also, again, think audience call out, pattern interrupt, and open loop. It could be the specific pattern interrupt that's working well, or the audience call out that's working really well in the hook, right? So we have the building blocks, which we think work. So for example, hook, um, and then we have maybe script. Um, if you can't sleep at night, you need to watch this. So maybe it's the script that works super well. Then we have the link to that specific footage and we use air. So we have it linked here and any extra notes. 
then the ad name within the ads manager when the data was last updated and then we put all of the data in here of that ad as a whole and this way we build our learning database and especially you know, at the end we have a lot of tested truths and lots of discredited ads and this way we can build um, our you know kind of library of winning building blocks winning elements and then you know if we maybe don't have ideas for new ads or if we need you know quick iterations quick wins you know maybe the account isn't doing so well at the moment we can just go in here we find our winning building blocks we go over discredited things so maybe we have an ad running which has lots of discredited things we can either then turn it off or we can create iterations super quickly based on the you know on this, on this you know real learnings on real data without guessing and i think that's core and i think you need that to create great ads and yeah this is essentially how we create um winning ads so we start here at the top um, you know, with the research part, then put it all together, you know, value propositions and use piece and we build out our personas. Then we build out the initial creative roadmap that's usually eight concepts. You know, we go into concepting and show you exactly how we concept. Then we go into scripting, you know, um, then we go into testing, I show you exactly how we test. We go into iterating, I show you exactly how we iterate. Then we make our learnings and here's exactly how we script, right? We have our building blocks um, um how, you know, what makes a great ad post-production, production, you know, what kind of shots we want to use, what kind of, you know, craft strategy kind of idea we want to use to build building block and combine that with a shot. So you could also take, call this building block, building block. And um, yeah, this is essentially or exactly how we create those $100 ads. I think the research, especially for peer analysis and quad one analysis is super um, important if you want to create great ads because you need to know what's missing in your ad account. And um, obviously there's you know, more things that come to it. It's not just the ad, there's an offer overall brand achievements, how much organic traffic are you going to get, etc. But this is how we create, you know, if you have a great brand, if you have a great product and great offer, this is exactly how we create those $100,000 ads. And if you had a kind of struggling right now, I would highly urge you to, to maybe really um, watch, this video, watch this video again and you know, take the learnings and implement them and you know, start building out your creatives like this because this is how we really build consistently great creators that last for months or years with a consistent CPA. And um, yeah, keep in mind, not every creative can be a $100,000 creative because your, your lower funnel creatives, you know, product aware, most aware, they most likely won't get the most amount of spend, but they should perform super, super well if they're not getting much spent. So keep that in, uh, keep that in your mind. And yeah, I hope that this video was helpful to you.